these men wanted to follow him. Though perhaps in the beginning, none of them realized just how much their lives would be changed under the influence of this divine teacher. From the very beginning, Jesus challenged them with a stern warning that to follow him meant picking up a cross of suffering and pain. Thus, Jesus and his disciples embarked on a mission unprecedented in the history of the world.
Jesus and his disciples were on their way to Caesarea Philippi. From these heights of approximately 1,000 feet, the view was inspiring. In the beauty of the quiet of the scene below them, the disciples could recall many of the things that Jesus had done. They had witnessed events that would shake the lives of men and of nations for all times. Jesus gave them the pattern of a holy and dedicated life, which all of them were to follow. Whenever people came to Jesus, he ministered to them and met their every need, even under extenuating circumstances. Take the case of Mary of the paralytic. Jesus also showed that he had not only come to heal the sick, but to bring comfort to those who were in distress. Could it be that Jesus was offering salvation to everyone? saw the faith of the paralytic's faith friends, he asked no questions. He seemed to have known what was in the young lady's heart and said, In order that you may know that the Son of Man has power upon the earth, I say unto you, Arise, my child, pick up your bed and walk. Just the touch of the Master's hand Paralytic arose before them, picked up her being. To the amazement of all, she walked about glorifying God. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Praise be to God. Oh, she did it. She walked. Hallelujah. Amazing grace. Perhaps no message from this old hymn is any dearer to our hearts than our Father's amazing grace for sinners such as ourselves. Another example of his willingness to forgive men of their sins was clearly demonstrated in a woman scorned. But the Pharisees tested Jesus.
treat this woman so? What has she done to deserve this? Master, this woman has said she was caught in the act of a dog. Is this true? You have judged her rightly, and she is guilty. The law of Moses says she must be stoned to death. What do you say? Anyone who is without sin, be the first to cast a stone at her. Where are your accusers now? Did even one of them condemn you? No, my lord. No. Neither do I condemn you. Go your way and sin no more. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Who is this man that he can forgive a woman who has sinned? I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but we'll have the light of life. Soon after Jesus stilled the storm, he and his disciples landed in the country of the Gadarenes, opposite Galilee. Nearby was a cemetery where a wild man lived. This man wandered night and day among the tombs and in the wild hills in this lonely place, screaming <laughs> and cutting himself with sharp pieces of stone. <laughs> Even chains had not been strong enough to hold him, because the demons often seized him, causing him to break the shackles. Then the demons drove him into the wilderness. From a distance, the wild man had seen Jesus and immediately began running toward him. He fell at his feet and worshipped him. To the disciples' amazement, the evil spirits that troubled him, as with one voice, cried out to the master, What? What are you going to do to me, Jesus? Serve the most high God. Jesus knew this man could never be well as long as he was filled with evil spirits that had often seized him. Jesus then asked, What is your name? Legion. Legion. My name is Legion. For we are many. Recognizing the power of Christ, the demons cried out, Please do not torment us. I beg you. Now a large herd of hogs was feeding nearby on a steep hillside above the sea, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter the swine. Come out of this man, you unclean spirit! <laughs> and the demons went out of the man and into the swine. Look! The demons have possessed the swine. Look! They have run wild. Look! The entire herd seems to be headed for the cliff. Now they are plunging headlong into the sea. Look! They are drowning. When the frightened herdsmen saw what happened, they fled and told it in the nearby towns and countryside. Then a crowd of curious people gathered to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had fled, sitting at Jesus' feet. A peaceful look was on his face, and he had the use of his mind again. But the people were afraid. What is this man Jesus like? Just who does he think he is? Get away from our land! We don't want you here! Get away! 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 
They were upset over the great loss which they had just experienced and held Jesus responsible for it. They preferred to be left alone. It was clear that their herds were more important to them than the salvation of man. The disciples realized more and more that a personal relationship with God surpasses in value anything that the world had to offer. Then the man from whom the demons were gone Stop Jesus by asking, May I go with you, please? May I go with you, please? No, my son. Go home to your friends and family and tell them of the wonderful things that God has done for you and how merciful he has been. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And the young man of and went on his way to in the cities of Decapolis. I'm here! I'm here. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I shall forever mine eyes to Jesus to behold the man who cares so much for me how marvelous that grace that caught my falling soul he looked beyond my fault and saw
And then two prophets, Moses, who had written down God's law, and Elijah, who had spoken God's word to Israel, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke of his death in Jerusalem to be carried out according to God's plan. When the drowsy disciples awakened, they were amazed and awe-stricken to see their master in such glory, and to see the two great prophets who appeared in brightness with Jesus. Peter, all confused, not knowing what he was saying, blurted out, Master, it is good for us to be here. If you will, let us build three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. As he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered into the cloud. There came a voice out of that cloud saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Do not be afraid. Arise. Reassured by Jesus' voice, three lifted their eyes and saw no man except Jesus. The heavenly voice had gone. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell no one of the vision until the Son of Man has been risen from the dead. meeting of the council was called in the palace of Caiaphas, the high priest. Indignant and hardened, they discussed with Caiaphas what to do about Jesus because his popularity had aroused their hatred and jealousy. How is it that this man has learned but has never studied into the We've got to take action quickly. Yes, yes. The crowds are blocking out for him. At this rate, he will soon be everybody's hero. That would be a disaster for us all. It could cause trouble with Rome too. Don't be a pack of fools. Can you not see the obvious solution? What? What? What, is what do you mean? Get rid of this Jesus. It would be far better for one man to die than for all of us to suffer. Yes, yes. That's what we've got to do. Devise a way to kill him. From that day on, the revengeful Jewish authorities began plotting to bring about Jesus' death. Meanwhile, 
Jesus and the disciples left the danger zone. For Jesus knew there was still work for him to do before God's appointed time for him to die. Yes, in spite of the jealousy, the hatred, and the plotting of his enemies to kill him, Jesus continued to perform many miracles. Through most of Jesus' ministry, the twelve apostles were his closest followers, of course. But also devoted to him were many faithful women. Two of the many women who stand out in the ministry of Jesus were women from outside the Jewish household of faith. I am a despised Samaritan who met our Lord at a well in my country. My story confirms the belief that God is no respecter of persons and that Jesus is the Christ, the giver of the very water of life. My witness to my hometown folks was I have found the Messiah. Come, see the man who told me everything, everything about my past life. He knew that I had had five husbands and that I was not married to the man I was living with at the time. Yet, whatever my sins and my spiritual ignorance of things, Jesus placed me in a position to be called the first evangelist. The spiritual advice Jesus gives his listeners are practical, purposeful, and to the point, applicable to everyday life in any culture or century. Another woman who comes to mind is the Canaanite woman, a Gentile born in the region of Phoenicia. When I went to Jesus, I was weary and worn from caring for my dangerously ill daughter. I was at the end of my rope when I went to plead with him for her. I knelt at his feet and cried earnestly out to him, Have mercy on me!
when quite unexpectedly he called for me to come forward and told me I was free of my infirmity. Then he reached out and touched me. He touched me. Jesus. 
was the best thing I ever, ever done. In his arms, in his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never did.
Now the Sabbath before the crucifixion, which we call Palm Sunday. Jerusalem was the scene of the end of the teaching and healing earthly ministry of Jesus. Many were longing for the Messiah to come, for the need of a Messiah had never been more urgent. 
So the people were caught up in the hope and happy hysteria of the day. And they went out to meet him with much acclamation and the waving of palm branches.
the last week of Jesus' life was a virtual whirlwind of activity. On Sunday, he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. The people greeted him like a king. But what a difference a day makes. For it was that following Monday that Jesus entered the sacred temple of Jerusalem. Before the people could make an offering in the temple, which was required by the religious laws, they had to exchange their everyday money for temple money, at a profit to the money changers and the priests. To Jesus' amazement, he found the temple turned into a noisy marketplace. Many yes. 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 I got three rides Many fine silks and cloths. Many fine silks. There were countless booths of shrewd merchants and money changers. Dozens of buyers waited sullenly for vendors to inspect their offerings. In front of one of the vendors was an elderly woman with a lamb. Unpure, not fit for sacrifice. I cannot give my approval to an animal blemished with spots. The elderly woman was too dim sighted to realize. The spots were merely dirt, so the vendor could easily clean the lamb later and sell it for a great profit. Without my approval, the priest will not accept it at the altar. I brought my help lamb. How did this be? Ignorance like yours is exactly why the priest engaged an expert like me. Hmm. I have given God the best that I have. The priest will take my word over yours. I have been authorized to charge six Issa for my judgment. You could have avoided all this trouble by buying your animal here at the market. From thieves who ask the cost of a month's food for a pigeon? Do you wish the inconvenience of taking this unpure lamb, or do you wish to leave it with me to dispose of? Now you listen to me. I have traveled three weeks to get here. I have paid for two dinar to change my coins into shekels for the temple tribute. And now you want to steal the very lamb that you have rejected? You're welcome to have another vendor examine your lamb or another six is our course. You are all things working together to squeeze the blood from our bones. If I were a man, I would have a blood. Oh, he arrives. The prophet comes. The vendor hoped they were wrong, but he needed to know for himself. He had been a victim of the prophet on an earlier visit to the temple. So groaning with effort, he hauled his large body up onto a table, and he tottered as he stood and looked over the crowds. When he saw him confirm his dread, it was indeed the prophet. The vendor tumbled from his table, and in a steam of rage, he scrambled to change his attitude and to get his products intact. Jesus saw the turmoil, and his actions there sealed his fate. Master, why have we come to the temple? Surely we can do no good here among all this confusion. Peter, what I'm going to do from this day on may seem strange and even dangerous to you, but soon you will understand everything. My Lord, see how the people are being cheated at every booth and table. There is no mercy. No goodness! John, bring the cords to me. For I must do what I must do. It is written that my house shall be called the house of prayer. But you and you have made it into a den of thieves. Thieves, I say! Thieves! What is this man doing? He's going mad! Has he gone mad? Somebody call the chief priest! He's going to rain! Temple is too important! This Jesus must be stopped! Save yourselves! Hurry! When the chief priest arrived,
bride and observed for themselves what had happened. They said to one another, Now we will be pressured by all the temple selves. Yes, and somehow, permanently, this lunatic from Nazareth must be stopped. While the chief priests looked on, the children came shouting,
Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be crucified. The solemn hour had now come, and Jesus dined with his disciples in a secluded place, the upper room. Thus, the Last Supper, the establishment of communion, gathering his courage and hope the evening before his arrest, Jesus spoke tenderly and truthfully to his disciples. I have eagerly awaited to share this special Passover meal with you. For I say to you, I will not eat until I am eating in my Father's kingdom. chosen these twelve, and even though they had failed him at times, he invested much of his life in them, and had come to love them in spite of their many weaknesses. The work of his kingdom will be placed in their hands. Yes, I'm 
Dear friend, I would not be with you much longer. And I tell you that where I am going, you may not come. Master, where are you going? <laughs> Why can't I follow you? I will lay down my life for you. No matter what the others do, I will never desert you. No, I'm Lord. 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 Would you lay down your life for me, Peter? I tell you the truth. This very night, before the cock crows at dawn, you will deny me three times. No! 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 I will never deny you. Never! I tell you never! I would die!
filled with despair, the master told the three to wait there and keep watch with him. Then he went further on and prayed in great distress to his heavenly father. Three times the master prayed, each time more intensely than the other. Three times he returned to his disciples between praying and each time found them asleep. Then he heard voices and saw the flickering light of torches and he said, The Son of Man, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be put into the hands of the evil men. Look, the man who is the to betray me is at hand. Be careful whom you kiss. Be careful whom you kiss. Be careful whom you kiss. Oh! His name is Judas. His name is Judas. His name is Judas. He's trying to steal your life. He's trying to steal your life. A mob from the chief priests and elders of the people came, armed with swords and clubs. They were led by Judas, one of the twelve, who was angry and upset with Jesus. Master, hail master. When Judas kissed the master with resignation and sadness, Jesus asked, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And the soldiers rushed forward and took Jesus prisoner. Then Peter, in an attempt to defend his master, bravely drew a short sword and cut off the right ear of the servant of the high priest. And all of the disciples forsook Jesus and fled like the cowards that they were. But Jesus reprimanded Peter. Peter, put the sword away. Do you not realize that I have to pray to my father and he would send legions of angels to protect me? But then... How would the scriptures be fulfilled? And the touch of the master's hand on the servant's ear immediately healed it. All my life, I have walked in the light. I have spoken in the light. Why now do you come and take me like a thief in the night? But all this must be done that scripture may be fulfilled. Friend, do what you came to do. When the soldiers and the mob approached Jesus with swords and clubs, he did not resist. Instead, he succumbed to his father's will and went calmly with them in the middle of the night to the high priest to be tried. Death was now the acceptance made for all mankind. Being arrested in the garden. The soldiers hurried Jesus through the sleeping streets and took him to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. Peter followed at a safe distance, wondering what he should do and fearing that the soldiers might take him prisoner also. They took Jesus inside and Peter frightened as never before, hung about in the courtyard. It was a cold night, and he edged nearer to the fire, restless and uninvolved in the stories being told. Then began the long night of trials. The council had been summoned and began interrogating witnesses who had been dragged from their beds to come in and lie about Jesus. This was so that the leaders could build a case against him that would result in a death sentence. We need a witness to testify. We got a man to crucify. Gotta get a witness. Gotta get a witness. Gotta get a witness. Gotta get a witness. Can I get a witness?
but Jesus just stood there and remained silent. Then the high priest, almost in despair, turned to him and said, I demand in the name of Almighty God that you tell us whether you claim to be the Messiah, the Son of Almighty God. Yes, it is as you say. But I tell you all, the day is coming when you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of God and returning on clouds from heaven. There was a gasp of horror, and the high priest tore at his ceremonial robe in outrage and distress and shouted, Enough! Blasphemy! We have all heard him say it! What more evidence do we need? What is your verdict? Death! Death! He is guilty! He must die! Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others blindfolded him and slapped him. But there was still one problem. They had to get the Roman governor's consent. So they took Jesus to Pilate. Meanwhile, as Peter was sitting in the courtyard warming himself, a servant girl said to him, You were with Jesus, the Nazarene. Aren't you one of his disciples? No, no. You are mistaken. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> there he is. That's one of Jesus' disciples. I tell you, we know you're one of Jesus' disciples. I know because you talk like a family. I tell you, I do not know the man of whom you speak. Immediately, when the cock crowed, <laughs> Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the cock crows at dawn, you will deny me three times. And Peter left the courtyard, crying bitterly, as if his heart would break. Oh. He had denied his Lord. Oh. What cowardice. Oh. What shame. Oh. But it is certain that following this ordeal, Peter would beg for forgiveness from his master for a brand new start. I can't believe that I'm wasted. All those years, I can't believe that I've cried so. If my soul could be measured by the tears that I've cried, there'd be no shame from where I stand. That it reached to the other side But now, Jesus, I'm an open book Won't you read every page of my heart? Jesus, won't you take a look? Jesus, I'm an open book. Won't you read every page of my heart? Jesus, won't you take a look?
and help me find a brand new store. dedicated disciple, after his betrayal, became a man of extreme regret and shame. Almost insane from guilt, he returned the 30 pieces of silver to the pious chief priests. Then he rushed out into the cold of the night, and high on a hill, he hanged himself. leaders took Jesus to Pontius Pilate. This man, guilty of treason, he even tried to make himself free. Are you the king of the Jews? When Jesus did not reply, Pilate went outside and spoke to the crowd. Shall I set your king free? Yes! Yes! yes. yes. Every Passover, it was the devil's custom to release one prisoner. Pilate was certain that Jesus was innocent and that the leaders had falsely accused him. But the fickle crowd, urged on by the religious leaders, shouted over and over again.
without delay, Jesus was at once beaten by the Roman soldiers and taken down a path called the Via Dolorosa on the fateful journey to the crucifixion at Calvary. And when they reached Calvary, the soldiers nailed Jesus to the cruel cross and the hammer, the hammer, the hammer. And Jesus shivered as the nails went through his hands. He shivered as the nails were driven through his feet. Two thieves hung to the left and right of him. A mixed crowd stood around watching, some teasing and insulting. His mother, a few of his closest friends, followers, and some who Jesus had helped stood nearby, watching in horror, their hearts broken. Others stood at a distance, including some of the women from Galilee. Crucifixion was a torturous way to kill a person. The soldiers gambled for his clothing at the foot of the cross. Then sat around and watched Jesus as he hung there. At other times, the people who passed by hurled abuse at Jesus, shaking their heads and their fists at him in mockery.
the Roman centurion in charge of the execution detail looked at Jesus, stunned and awestruck. He cried out. This man was truly the Son of God. Yes, under a darkened sky, the Son of God, who had saved others, would not come down from the cross to save himself as his enemies demanded, but pay the penalty for mankind's sin.
what happened on Calvary over 2,000 years ago, the ultimate sacrifice that changed the world, still touches lives today and will for all eternity. On the third day after Jesus' execution, three women went to visit the tomb. One was Mary Magdalene, the woman from whom Jesus had cast out seven demons. She went to tell the good news she found the disciples, Peter and John, wet-eyed with grief. Dear God, why don't they believe me? 
after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to many of his faithful followers. He taught them many things that they did not understand while he was alive. And Jesus, our mighty Redeemer, the King of Kings, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, having accomplished his work on earth, met the eleven disciples on a mountain in Galilee, just as he had promised. He was now free at last to return to his father's home in glory. Peace be unto you. All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye into all the world, teach and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey all the commands that I have given you. And hold this to be true, that I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. I will be with you. Son, in whom I am well pleased. 